Video presentation tips is what I'm calling this one. But we're doing more of it and, and absolutely right as well. Clients are quite happy for this one. You don't have to go back to physical face-to-face. -face. The first thing is start changing your language. Start calling it face-to-face. -face. This is face-to-face. -face. You just happen to be on a video screen. So when you're giving the client the options, which you should do really, and you know we operate um, uh, the time efficiency and, and more efficiency for you. We operate a online video virtual service here. We can talk to you on the phone if you prefer that, but we could also do face to face. And of course, what you mean by face to face is face to video face. So you've got a screen with a face on it. You're a screen on a, a face on a screen. So it's face to face. I know we talk about face to face being in the real world, but I think it's just a, a Turn on, turn on words, isn't it? Just because you're looking at a computer screen of a face, it's still face to face. You can still read eye, eye contact, read, read facial expressions. You can pick up on how people are feeling by looking at their face. Especially if you get some big monitors when you're doing this, this kind of work. So that's the first one for you as well. Um, the second uh, tip for you is what I call a stable head. A stable head. Now, when you're online face to face with a customer and you're talking to them, they're talking to you, um, you will want to have yourself a chair, of course, some sort of chair. But you'll want to have it so that your back and your head, you know, it's a very long person there, isn't it? A <laughs> small face you've got there. So you see, you've got your back to, to the back of the chair, so your head is stable. So that when you're talking, your head doesn't move around so much. Because if I went a bit closer to the camera now, well, I'm going to scare you a bit now, I apologise for this one, but that's about the sort of distance that most people would be on camera. It's about right, isn't it? Where you've got, you see my shoulder, but you can see my face. You can see my eyes and my, my, my expressions and stuff like that. Any closer would be a bit, bit weird, wouldn't it? And any further back for a video conference is too, too aloof, really. So on video conference, you'd be about that sort of distance, which for those of you listening on a podcast, you won't be able to know, but it's pretty much half and half. You can see my shoulder and you can see my face. Now, I start to move around now. So you know, if I'm, if I'm sitting down and my face starts to move around too much, you know, it's, it starts to get very difficult to focus and concentrate. So if you've got a back to your back or chair back, your, your head is pretty stable. You move around. Of course you should. You know, I'm moving around now and I'm smiling and I'm grimacing and all those good things. But right now my head isn't moving unnecessarily. My body is fairly secure. That's the whole point. Your shoulder don't move around too much. Obviously, I'm presenting the camera on a live stream, so I'm standing up and moving around anyway in my studio here. But that's a nice little tip there for you, which I quite like. When you're online, test and summarise often. Test and summarise. When I say test, what I'm talking about here is ask the customer, how does that sound to you? What do you think about that? How does that come over to you? Test them, make sure they're listening a bit derogatory. Yeah. Make sure they're understanding, make sure they're following you all the time because people's attention span is not as good on video as it is when you're physically there with somebody. So test them off and how does that sound to you? What does that seem like to you so far, Mr. Brown? Am I picked up? Well, is, are you picking up what I'm putting down, man? <laughs> it might be right for a hipster, but I don't think so for a customer. So that's the first thing. The second thing is to summarize often, have quick summaries. Okay, Mr. Brown, let's quick summarize what we've been talking about so far in the last couple of minutes just to pick up on some issues. So test and summarise often is the key, isn't it? So there's a nice little couple of tips there for you. Let's give you some more of these tips while we're on it as well. Um, there's a couple of hypnotic ones for you, which you might like, actually. I, think I, I quite like this one. The first one is, is, is to seek more feedback from the person that you're talking to if it's one-on-one, -on -one, which we talked about there with the testing. But it may well be that you're presenting to a small group of people as well. Maybe a large audience if you're doing Zoom seminars, or a small audience if you do more of a workshop or a presentation, or a one-on-one, -on -one, or one-on two or three people maybe. In that situation, we recommend you use yes tags. Now I'll tell you what a yes tag is. Oops, leave that pen, there it is. It's a yes tag. You may have heard me talk about this before on NLP. A yes tag is where you say something at the end of a sentence to get the customer to nod. And they say to themselves, yes. So you could say, for example, um, the weather, weather's rather fine. 
isn't it? Or you could say, for example, um, we're going to finish at five o'clock, aren't we? Or this particular scheme is very popular, isn't it? Or it could be that um, you know, the, we're, we're going to be running for about 45 minutes um, today. Is that OK? So you're using these tags at the end in order to get the customer to, to nod or to say yes. Because you're involving them, you're bringing them into the conversation. It's great on a group scheme because you don't actually get the group to sort of say yes, but you get them to nod in their heads. So this is a really good tip, isn't it? Now, everyone's really worried about that, aren't they? And people are sort of yesing and they're, they're agreeing with you and therefore they're connecting with you. That's known as a yes tag as well. I like that one. How does that sound? Do you think? Um, don't you? Um, am I right? I've heard that one be used before on a group basis. Am I right? It's a bit, 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 bit so shady, but it's, it's something you could use as well. Um, the last tip for you is eye contact, which we've talked about before. In fact, we talked about this last week, eye contact. So I don't want to repeat what I said last time. And we talked about eye contact. And the main message really was that when you're giving eye contact on Zoom, don't glare at the lens. Now, I'm pretty much talking to the lens with you here because, as far as I'm aware, you're behind that lens and there's probably quite a few of you. I don't know. It might be only one of persons listening today, but there might be some hundreds of people behind that lens. So when I talk to you, I, I regard you as being behind the lens. So that's why I'm talking to the lens now. I'm quite happy to do so because that's the way I'm operating. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one and I've got somebody's picture... So, for example, I've got, I've got a monitor right above me there, so I can, I can look at somebody's face and look at the lens. And remember, last week we talked about gazing. So you gaze between the lens and the person, back to the person again, the lens. So back to the person's face, eyes, back to the lens. So you're gazing one to the other, picking up on the person's image. We gave that to you as a tip. Here's, here's the important thing. When you want to land an important point, make sure you go to the lens. Today's example. So, Mr. Brown, this, this mortgage that we're organising for you is extremely flexible. And one of the best tips is it allows you to repay the mortgage early. So you're going straight back to the lens for the final major point. So gaze away, but when you want to make the really big point. Now, this particular mortgage is highly competitive, but I tell you what, it's not available very often. It might even run out soon. So, you know, to the lens when you want to land a point. A little final point there for you. On eye contact, give loads of Zoom tips there for you because it is the way to do it.